Hey everyone, welcome back to my final video in my Fortinet Ansible solution series. Uh, this is going to be our last uh, video session and we're going to wrap up all the work we've been doing originally. So let's begin. So we're going to uh, reconfigure our network VLANs to enforce a dev pod uh, separation. So what this will entail is creating two more VLANs and then we're going to configure port forwarding on our external interface to our WordPress production instance. So just a quick recap. In the last three tutorials, we've used Ansible to help create VLANs and to help set up uh, the WordPress instance on the dev and prod servers. By separating out the dev prod, it helps enforce security and QA QCs. And by automating our firewall rules, it helps us to do consistent rollout strategies uh, in case something happens that we blow away a router or a switch. We could always go back and rerun our Ansible playbook to uh, set the rules again. So as I mentioned earlier, we're going to create a developer's network and an operator's network. So far, we only have a VLAN ID of 100 and 200. 100 was devoted to the dev servers and 200 was devoted to the production servers. Now we're going to create the uh, VLAN ID 300 and 400. 300 for the developers and 400 for the operators. So what we will need to do is we will need to remove all the VLAN rules that we set originally and we're going to install the new uh, rule sets. So what we'll do is uh, I'll open up another terminal. I'll increase the font size a bit here. Okay. And I'm going to grab two playbooks from my GitHub repository. Well, before that, I just realized I need to go into our demo environment and I need to activate our virtual environment. Okay, so then we'll go to Ansible and then I'll go down to tutorial four and then I'll grab our remove VLAN. And I'll place it here. Uh, oops. Okay, so I already had it installed. So, okay, so I'll just do this real fast. So we'll just let this run. So we're removing all our IP IP firewall policies, and now we're going to remove our firewall addresses, and then eventually we're going to actually remove the VLAN interface. Uh, let's run that again because it didn't complete properly. Okay, so now all our uh, VLANs have been removed. So now I'm going to download our dev prod rule set. And I think I already got this. So I'm going to remove it because it's an older one and I'm going to download this new one. Um, let me open up VS Code and I'll show you what this looks like. Okay, 
So in the dev prod, it's basically the same thing as our VLAN YAML we originally used in tutorial one. But in this one, we're going to add uh, the rule set, uh, I mean VLAN 300 and VLAN 400. And we'll scroll down a bit. And we were going to notice that originally we were talking from VLAN 100 to 200. That would mean that the developing the developer server network could talk to the production uh, server network. And obviously this is something we didn't want anymore. So we'll scroll down here and you'll see where it says status. We're going to disable this rule. And same thing vice versa, we're going to disable that rule. And what we want to do is we want to allow the VLAN 400, which is the operator's network, to access the developer servers. And uh, we want them to access the production servers right here. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, uh, we want them to access everything in the developer's network. The developer's network, we only want them to access the dev server environment and that's that rule right here. So now with the old rules removed we'll add this new rule. So I'll uh, go back one directory um, and activate this here. And then we're going to run our playbook for dev pod. Okay, let's give this a couple of seconds before we're running it. Okay, there could be some task running in the background that's jamming up the queues. All right. Now, if we log into the web interface, we should be able to see uh, those rule sets installed. So let's go here and log into our clients. Sorry, so network interfaces, ah, network interfaces. So now we see VLAN 100, 200, 300, and 400 have been added. Uh, we go to policies and IP4 policies. And now we see all the new uh, firewall policies have been installed. Okay. So let's just verify that everything is actually working. So what I'll do is I will uh, set myself to the VLAN 300. I'll go to networks, uh, VLAN 300, uh, manually 
Disconnect from this one. Why? So, right now we should be on the developers network and we'll try to see what we can access. So, I'm going to ping the developer, uh, developer server network and we can have access there. I'm going to ping the, the pr production environment network and notice we can't ping that network. We're going to ping the developer's network itself, and it seems to be working fine. And we're going to try to ping the ops network, and it looks like we can't access the ops network. Okay, so I'm going to go back now, and I'm going to turn off this interface for VLAN 300. And I'm going to switch over to VLAN 400. So this should be the operator's network. So 10.1.4.100. And apply. Okay, so now we're on the operator's network. So we're going to ping the, the uh, gateway for the dev servers and we have access. We're going to ping the gateway for the production servers. We do have access. And developers network have access. Oops. And finally, our own network. Yep, so it looks like everything's working fine. Okay, so in tutorial three, we set up a dev instance of WordPress and a production instance of WordPress. However, we did not allow external access to the production instance. So we need to now create a virtual IP to allow the mapping, and we need to enable it on the firewall rules. So what I'll do right now is, I'll I believe I have an old version here, so I'll remove that and I will download a new version. And now there's a couple of changes that might need to take place here so if we go in so when, under the uh, creating VIP the firewall VIP we have an external IP address and that needs to be mapped to WAN 1 and this won't work anymore because we're on a different network so I'll just log in again So if we go to network, interfaces, uh, yeah, that's fine. You'll notice we're in 192.168.0.102. So I need to update this. And this is going to be mapped to the IP address 10.1.2.80, which is our production uh, WordPress instance. And this is the firewall rule that will allow the external IPs to uh, VLAN 200. So I'll save this. And I'll execute the playbook. Okay, so that's gone in. It's 
So there's one more thing. If we take a look at what we did with the WordPress, it was a default install and it took the internal IP address, which means when an external user tries to access the WordPress instance we have set up, they're going to get the internal IP address. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to log into our WordPress instance. And I believe it should be wp-admin. Okay, so we'll go to uh, settings, general, and we're going to change this to our external IP address, which I believe was uh, 192.168.0.102. Change this to and we'll save changes and what I'm going to do now is um I'm going to deactivate all my interfaces that are tied to the Fortinet because I want to come through the outside gateway. So I'm going to disable all this. I'm going to connect onto my Wi-Fi network, which is external to uh, the FortiGate. So it should uh, represent us coming through an external IP. Okay, now we should be fully external and let's try to see what happens now. So, uh, 192.168.0. Uh, what was it again? 102. And make sure we go through HTTPS. And there we have it. This is a, uh, we've been mapped from the external interface to our production server. And this is our production instance of WordPress. So to wrap up, in our series of tutorials, we demonstrated how we can use Ansible to configure our Forte Gay appliance to create the VLANs, to set up a production and development environment to segregate out the two groups, and we've also created a way to route our external uh, HTTPS traffic towards our WordPress uh, production instance. However, this all this tutorial ends here we can continue to improve this uh, workflow we have by integrating a continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline and get uh, this is common in the industry as well where you would uh, check out the rules and you'll edit the rules for the firewalls or the the, um, the IPs and then you'll commit that rule and then there's an automation in the back end that will automatically put these rule sets into various routers and switches on the network. We can take a look at that in future uh, web seminars that we'll be holding. Um, if you have any questions or any feedback, that'd be great. My email address is right here on the slide, but you can contact our, any of our other staff and all our contact information we provide below. Thanks for watching this series and I look forward to hearing your feedback. Have a great day.